A few months ago, when the Israeli-Palestinian conflict broke out, I took a position which I knew wouldn't be popular, which I knew that even people from my own community, people who generally support me, are not going to support me because we know there are far more numerous Muslims on social media these days. And also a lot of leftist people who cannot see past this paradigm of oppressed versus oppressor. But with me, it's never about taking popular position. I just want to speak my mind and what rationally makes sense to me, I would talk about it and I would take that position. Although I admit I could be wrong and later down the line, I might realize that I was wrong. Those of you who have been following me for a long time, you would know that I have never been a supporter of Donald Trump. And to say that I am a supporter of Donald Trump today, that would not be a true characterization of my understanding of American politics either. However, I have always believed that democracy is all about picking the lesser of two evils. You can't find a person in your own household with whom you agree with everything. So how can you find a candidate in a country of millions with whom you would agree with everything? It's just impossible. So you always have to pick the lesser of two evils. Now, when I look at American politics, when I look at European politics, I have to pick the lesser of two evils. In 2005, if you had asked me, Harris, if we press this button and we will create a world where religions will have absolutely no impact, I would have picked that. But some 17, 18 years later, we can see that if you suddenly remove religion from a society, unless you do it across the board all over the world, that is not a good idea. Because in some cases, certain traditional values, albeit they could be bad, and I may not inherently agree with them, we cannot remove them suddenly. Because humans being social creatures that they are, will replace it with something else. And unfortunately, as soon as we removed traditional Christian values, we replaced them with wokeism. And what has wokeism given to the world? Uncontrolled migration, gender pronoun issues, and pathological altruism. Just recently, we saw the election of Geert Wilders, Georgia Maloney in Italy. And both of those politicians come from the conservative side, the right side, and the left has always demonized those kind of people as the far right. And 15 years ago, I would not even have looked at these people, but I see them as necessary people because if we don't have these people, then we have these crazy leftist politicians who say, come, no questions will be asked. You can come here in droves and you don't have to respect our Western values. Just come. You can f*** these women. You can groom little girls. You can chant for jihad and sharia in the UK. No one would say anything to you because we are woke. So who was going to stop them? Look what's happening in Europe right now. This is England. Look at these people. Look, despite having a two-tiered policing system, they still beat the hell out of UK cops. Look at them. These UK cops are running for their lives. Look at this. These people in France, they are burning French flags. Why? Just to intimidate them. And look, what other flag is there? A Palestinian flag. And look, this is Germany. Look what's happening in Germany. Germany, the only country that took what? two to three million Syrian refugees. They got 7,000 women. 7,000 German women have been by refugees since 2015. They opened their borders and in the process, they fucked every other European country as well. So Georgia Maloney's and Good Wilders, it was always going to happen. And 15 years ago, I would not even have looked in their direction, but now I am forced to say that we need more Good Wilders. We need more Georgia Maloney's. And we need more Donald Trump's. Yep, there you go. I said it. I don't agree with Donald Trump's pandering to Christian fundamentalists. I don't agree with his anti-abortion stance. I don't agree with him what he did on January 6th. I don't agree with a lot of his stuff. I genuinely believe that anti-vaxxers are stupid idiots. I genuinely believe those who support Putin and are anti-Ukraine. To me, these guys are stupid. But 
you know who I think is more stupid? Those crazy leftists who think that they can get in bed with radical Islamist fascist jihadists. That is the single biggest, dumbest group out there. And that is a big statement because I think these conspiracy theorists, these anti-vaxxers, oh, COVID is here too, you know, government is going to put these authoritarian moves on us. Look, nothing happened. 96% of Australian population got jabbed at least twice. Forget about 95% of Australians dying. Not even 1%, not even 0.1% of Australians died. All stupid conspiracy theories. These guys support a mad dictator like Vladimir Putin, and they want Ukraine to be annexed by Russia. I mean, these guys are really unhinged people. I mean, I have no respect for these people, but I am left with no choice. If I were an American, I would have voted for Donald Trump. And I have a vested interest in that too. I'm not an American. I go to Europe, and every year I go to Europe, I see it gets worse than the year before. But I worry for Australia. Australia is safe right now. You know why? Because there's only 2% Muslims. And most of them are actually Lebanese Muslims who are not Islamists and jihadis. They have other problems, but they're not Islamists and jihadis. But it could get worse because whatever happens in the rest of the Western world, it happens in Australia as well. And what is happening in Europe and America and Canada? I don't want it to happen to Australia. Why am I forced to like Donald Trump? Because People on the left should be saying what Donald Trump is saying, because to me, the single biggest threat the West faces is Islamic fascism. It's the single biggest threat. Yes, you have a Chinese threat, you have a Russian threat, but that is not an internal threat. That's an external threat. And I think the West is well capable of defeating the Chinese or Russian threat. But Islamic fascism is growing from within. And unless we do something about it, I don't think the West would be able to withstand that. This is why anyone, whether you're right or left or whatever, I don't care. So why suddenly I'm supporting Donald Trump? Have a listen to what he had to say. This is something that leftists should be saying, but Trump is saying that. We don't want to be like Europe with jihads on every corner. That's what happens. I mean, we're going to have, we're going to be like Europe. You take a look at London, you take a look at Paris, you take a look at what's going on over there. You take a look at Athens, you take a look at Rome. Every major Western European capital, actually not even just capital, other cities as well, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And no one wants to talk about it. So if only conservatives are going to talk about it, sorry, if I were a voter of your country, I would vote for you. There, we want to be the United States of America and we want to make our country great again. Right now, we don't have a great country. We have a laughing stock. As president, I will end once and for all the mass importation of anti-Semitism into the United States. And just as I did before, we will keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. We're going to keep them out of our country. Donald Trump is a populist. He may not be able to do all the things that he's saying, but at least it sends a signal to leftist politicians to get your act together. Because he may not be able to do it. Just like last time he put this Muslim travel ban and then the Supreme Court overturned it. You may not be able to do it, but that's not important. What's important is it sends a signal to other politicians. Just like Gert Wilders and George Maloney sent a signal to the European Union. Get your act together, otherwise we would leave the European Union. And then the European Union is forced to pass a resolution that they would fast track the deportation of illegal migrants. And they would also reduce the number of illegal migrants coming into Europe. The same signal needs to be sent to every leftist politician around the Western world. And I think Donald Trump is doing that. As I said, he may not be able to achieve any of these things, but it's a start. I'll also be implementing strong ideological screenings for all immigrants coming in. This is something I have been saying for a very long time. Have a strong vetting process. Yes, I know people say that, oh, they, it's Takia, they can lie. No, anyone who's ever gone through any risk assessment process or a questionnaire, when there are multi-layered questions, like follow-up questions after follow-up questions, your mask can fall off very quickly. For example, if you ask a Muslim, hey, do you think it's okay for an older man to marry a nine-year-old girl or have relationships with a child? He would say, no, of course not. Even though he might know what Muhammad did. But then you ask another question, what, what is your opinion on Prophet Muhammad marrying a nine-year-old child? Uh, he's going to look here and there. And then you can ask, Another follow-up question, if he says, oh, it was okay back in those days. 
Would you think that in this day and age, we would call him a pedophile? He would never say that. Or if he says it, you would know that he's lying. And you can carefully create this questionnaire. And that would be a start. Again, it won't be 100% absolute foolproof, but it would be a start. And guess what? Muslims would rather go to countries that would not have that ideological screening. So people like us have been saying, and again, as I said, I'm not sure whether he would be able to implement that, but at least it's a start. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you sympathize with jihadists, then we don't want you in our country and you're not going to be getting into our country. I will cancel the student visas, Hamas sympathizers on college campuses. The college campuses are being taken over. And all of the resident aliens who joined in the pro-jihadist protest this month, nobody... That's what they are. They're pro-jihadist protests. Nobody has a balls to say it. Nobody can call it out. Certainly leftist politicians can't call it out. If Trump's going to call it out, I can disagree with his million other policies. But to me, the, the most significant threat the West faces is Islamic fascism. I cannot stand the fact that if he comes to power, he might withdraw his support for Ukraine. That would embolden a mad autocrat like Putin. But political scientists like John Mearsheimer have said that even though that's Trump's rhetoric, but when he does come to power, he won't be able to withdraw support for Ukraine. So I'm hoping for that. But regardless of that, if he's going to speak up against the rise of Islamic fascism, whether that's America or Canada or anywhere else, my vote is for him. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Come 2025, we will find you and we will deport you. Yeah, you should be finding them and deporting them. Illegal migration is a huge problem. Look what's happened under Biden's presidency. Look at this. In 2023, the number of illegal migrants coming into America has surpassed American births. And you know why that's happening? It's happening because Biden's administration has been threatening lawsuits against states like Texas that deport illegal migrants. So Biden administration has basically been encouraging illegal migration. Sorry, no sane person can support you. Again, as I said, there's so many things that I don't like about Trump or his policies. But I'm sorry, I have to find the single worst issue that is being faced by the Western world. And that's the rise of Islamic fascism. And I'm not the only one. The left is consistently losing sane, secular-minded people right in the middle. I'm an atheist. The last thing I want to do is pander to Christian fundamentalism. But you know what's worse than pandering to Christian fundamentalists? Pandering to Muslim fundamentalists. That's worse. That's the biggest threat. How do you think those classic liberals sitting right in the middle, what do you think he's going to do when he sees a migrant from a foreign culture who does not respect your values, your rules, or your laws? He f***s your women. He grooms your young girls. He pisses on the side of a street. He beats elderly people. He shows no respect to your local laws. What do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's going to keep voting for the same people? Of course, there are crazy Wokistanis, but there's a big chunk of people who could be liberal, secular, even atheists sitting right in the middle. And when they see this happening, they say, you know what? I am not going to vote for those people who have caused this. I don't think Trump would be able to do this. I don't think even Gift Wilders would be able to control that or George Maloney would be able to control that. But at least it's setting a precedent. It is sending a warning to those leftist politicians to get their act together. So if I were an American, I would vote for Trump. But obviously I'm not an American and I would not be voting. I hope I can tell you that the single biggest threat that the West faces is the rise of Islamic fascism. The Chinese threat, the Russian threat, their external threats, and the West is well capable of dealing with those threats. But this threat from within, mm -mm. You won't be able to withstand that unless you do something right now. I hope you like this video. So give it a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And also, you can be my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Sultan. And if that's too much, then you can buy me a coffee. Until next time, ta -da.
If you would like to support my work, you can become my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Harusultan or you can simply buy me a coffee.